What? Yeah. No, I'm... Yeah, I'm behaving myself. I, no, I'm not playing in abandoned buildings. What? Again? Now. I suppose you had those people follow me again. Fine. Hey. This is Jimmy Farrell from Monty and the Farrow, and I want to thank all our subscribers. We have now passed 14,000 on our YouTube channel. But I want to ask our subscribers to take the next step for us and become a full-fledged member of Monty and the Faro. Yeah, that's right, folks. There's three different levels to choose from. There's free shirts. There's free autographs. Just check it out and become a member of Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty and the Faro. Later. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestler broadcast, Monty and the Farrow, only seen here out of Indie Music TV. Straight out of Ron Conkema, Long Island. At the board is our super producer, Jared. Jared, how are you, bud? I'm good. How are you? All right, man. Thank you for show one. How did you feel about the return of the infamous John Sawyer? No pies were thrown. I was expecting pies to be thrown. It's a, it's a, he's a comedian, so... We, we, you know. I felt I felt John was seemed a little bit nervous. He seemed a little, he probably didn't. He was probably afraid that something was coming. <laughs> and it really isn't, dude. Like I mean, a big giant hand, like nah, just, Johnny. You know, uh, look, I, you know, I always respected him for the fact that again, if it was, you know, we've had this discussion and yeah. we don't necessarily agree <laughs> on it, right? A few times, but okay. but, <laughs> but I feel like you know, if with him, if this whole thing doesn't start. It was a starting you know I mean? point, right? Right. I, I mean, imagine. I think about. I think about, I mean, we have our, our special guest, uh, Lloyd Anoy on, right? I mean, we're getting opportunities to speak to these... Or is it these Anoa? Well, I'm going to ask or is it him, right? Because, you know, I pack people's names up on a regular basis. <laughs> no, not you. Well, not me. <laughs> Come on. But, you know, look, we've had this opportunity to, to have this highly rated show yeah. and, and have these wonderful, which I, I was telling YouTube in an interview I just had with them, was... Mm -hmm. This isn't fans. This is our family. Right. And I really, we really do feel like yep. that. So we wouldn't yep. have that opportunity. Yeah. And a call out to the family, the first ladies in the house, yeah. R.J. Hudson in the house, yeah. Jason in the house. By the way, I've got to send some T-shirts out to some people because I, I'm so behind. I feel like such is an idiot. Is Bearcat Lee in the house? No. Chris Lee is in the house, if you want to call him Bearcat <laughs> hey, Lee. Hey, mate! Um, <laughs> but anyway, you know, we had this opportunity. And I, I think about it. Look, I'm not trying to name all the things that have happened, but... Quite a, you know, quite a we've few. met, dude. I, quite, quite a lot. I negotiated. We'd be here a while. I negotiated with NBC right. for Tony Atlas right. and got him a contract That's right. from the Young Rock. Yeah. What, what would I ever think I would have no, that opportunity? Not at all. So, you know what? Not I thank all. John Sawyer for this. Yeah. You know, I mean, what about the time we had breakfast and spent the whole day with demolition? Yeah. We would have let Sims pee in the bathroom. Well, that's true. That was, that was hilarious. All yeah. right, dude. So. Bringing Brittany Griner home, and I'm going to ask our guest on this too because oh, I got to tell no. you, this is something to talk about. Oh boy, here we go. go ahead. Came at a heavy cost, but was it worth it? Fans, friends, and allies from across the sports world have overtaken with joy. I don't, I'm not overtaken with joy. When the news that Brittany Griner's release broke Thursday morning, the U.S. government successfully orchestrated a one-for-one -one prisoner swap with Russia, with Russia to bring Griner home after she spent months in detainment on drug smuggling charges and later sentenced to nine years in prison. Yes, she's on a plane now, per President, per President Joe Biden. She should be home within the next day. Griner's wife, Shereel, also spoke during Biden's conference saying, her family is whole again. As it stands now, she's free, safe, and a flight home. 
but if it didn't come out with a heavy cost considering she was swapped for. There is still plenty of work to be done and to bring another. I, I ask you, is this the same Brittany Griner that refused mm -hmm. to stand mm -hmm. for our national anthem? Is this the same lady? Yep. Yes, it is. Interesting. Yes, it is. You started, but again, this was part of a demonstration against police brutality. Mm. Um, so Swapped for who, by the way? She was swapped for a Russian sla uh, spy or whatever. Okay. The GOP, though, Farron, I need you to weigh in on all this. All Rips right. Britney Griner deal for stranding Paul Wellman in Russia. Paul Wellman. I got Celebrities you. Celebrities over veterans. Republican lawmakers on Thursday criticized for Biden for the deal that returned WNBA star Britney Griner December 8th for carrying fentanyl. Fentanyl testing strips. Interesting. Well... Uh, Way in, brother. Man, oh, man. Um, you know what's weird? There, what gets stuck in my head when I see this sort of deal being made. I'm infuriated, by the way. You're sh well, look, you I'm served, infuriated. and no, I can it, see why you It has even be, nothing to do with that. It, 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 to me, okay. it even more so gives you the right to say it. Well, you always have the right, but to me, it, it more so gives you the right to feel the way you feel. Because she took a big, fat dump on the national anthem that you risked your life over. So, yeah, I'm going to say that. And she was you know, carrying illegal drugs into another country. Here's what really kills me. What, what made her more important? Do you remember Daniel Pearl? Yes. You know who that is, right? Yep. You know that he was uh, beheaded, right? Yeah. Uh, what was done to get him out of there? Nothing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Maria Davis says Britney should be in jail. Yeah. She I was, agree. Maria. She was. But the president of the United States decided to get her out. Yeah. Um... Uh, I'm not on board with it. You know, I think it sucks. I mean, if that's what you, you know, that's what some people think is a wonderful thing. You know, that's great. They probably also pee on the American flag. You know, it's possible. I don't know. You know, are we going to get in trouble for my opinion again? Because this is just absolute horseshit to me what happened here. It's I absolute know. horseshit. I really want to get Lloyd's opinion on this when we get him on air. But um, okay. Okay. It's I don't get again, it at all. Again, we have a veteran, veteran, yeah. sorry, mm -hmm. yeah. that's still in that country. Right. We have a woman who spit on this country. That's look. I understand she was angry over pre police brutality. That's I fair. get it. That's fine if but she that, wants to be that, that way. That's fine. Again, this whole not respecting this country, right, is not the answer no. to get your message across. Mm. Not to those who know better. That's just, it, ugh. yeah, no better. No better. This is, we're very lucky to be Americans. We are very, very blessed to be allowed the freedoms that other countries can only dream of. And Maria says she'll, she will write a book, do a movie, and appear on talk shows. Probably. Probably going to Again, if it was you and probably. me carrying are drugs into Russia. Oh, I'm done. Are they getting us out of that? Are you kidding me? I'm the Russian cornholio. They've just stretched me the like corn. Jane Fonda on that exercise The cornholio. Yeah, I'm done. Wow. Are you kidding? All right. A regular person's done. Finished. Done. Finished. You know? Well, you know what? There is a regular person. There's a, there's a person defending our country that's still in there. There you go. But again. I guess that sums that up. Again, I don't hear anybody. Right. I've heard people for four years, last four years or six years ago, mm -hmm. nonstop complaining mm -hmm. and not one no. thing about anything nope. that's going on right now. Nope. And you won't. And again, if everybody remembers our original YouTube channel, which had <laughs> lots of subscribers and members and everything else, got shut down for our political thoughts. So we promised not to talk politics, but guess what? That lasted one show. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, We too. have to speak up. Yeah. We have a right to our opinion, and we personally think that this is absolute garbage. WWE Hall of Famer Barry Windham in ICU follow, uh, following a heart attack. The future is uncertain. Former WWE star Barry Windham is in the ICU after suffering a heart attack. The 60-year-old former wrestling star was in the airport on Friday evening when he went into cardiac arrest, according to his niece, Mika Rotunda, who created a GoFundMe page to help Windham with his medical costs. Um... Spidey, if you have a chance, maybe you could put the GoFundMe page on as we go so maybe fans can donate to Mr. Wyndham. Uh, 
before I get to you, Farrow, Barry Windham to me is in my top 10 favorite wrestlers. He was in studio here. Really nice guy. Um, we actually asked him because he supposedly had a heart attack the first you know, went actually right at right mm -hmm. before, well, not right before, but within a year or so right. before our interview with mm -hmm. him. But he claimed he did not have a heart attack. I don't know if he did or not. The right. articles do say this is his second heart attack. Right. So, again, I'm going to go with what Barry Windham said, but right. um, very upsetting um, yeah. about Barry. No, it's terrible. It's terrible. I, like you said, we got to meet him. Wonderful person. Uh, definitely... Left a huge impression from our younger days. I love Barry Windham. You never want to hear something like this. And he's too damn young, too. He's only 62, it says here. He's 62 years old. Just, it's rough, you know? And is this the part where I can hear the, 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 the shaking of the fist? Why isn't Vince McMahon? By the way, Phil says it's you know, Jim Morrison's birthday today. Yes, it is. It's also John Lennon's death day. I this think, is a rough yeah, I day. Think this, I think we've gone through this once we before, We have right? before, yes. So anyway, you were saying about Barry? No, I'm just saying, you know, I mean, this is where I can hear the shaking fist like like Vince McMahon should have swooped in and taken care of. Why does he need a GoFundMe page? He's a, he's a wrestling legend, blah, blah, blah. I can hear them. Any response to um, the, wow. the voices in my head? Hi, Randy. How you doing, Randy? Do you Orton? think certain wrestlers should be taken care of more than other wrestlers? No. Like, or is it... Because, you know, if Vince, no, if Vince did it for Barry, wrestlers. he'd have to do it for I agree every with that wrestler. I agree with but that then again, theory. In a perfect world, I'd like to see them all somewhat compensated, but that's not being realistic Jay Will either. says, Barry Windham, one of the best. I have met Kendall Windham. He's a jerk. Really? That's what he says. He's probably mad because he got lousy booking. <laughs> Kendall. <laughs> Poor Kendall. Kendall really got shafted, dude. Kendall, Kendall is like Zeppo. From the Marx Brothers. Kendall, you got Groucho, Chico, Kendall, Harpo. Kendall looks like Orange Seppo. Cassidy, dude. Yeah, where, where, where did he think he was going That's anyway? what I'm saying. What are you doing? I have what are you doing weighing 110 it's pounds? It's not like he's Bo Dallas to Bray Wyatt. Now, Bo Dallas should be champion. To the right of, the, to the right <laughs> of me is the star of the show, Mr. Jimmy Farrell. Jimmy Farrell, along with his partner, Bart Griggs. <clears throat> Make up the band to Wisteria Hall. Wisteria Hall sings such great songs as In My Dreams, This Life, Not Far Behind, Here Comes the Rain. They also sing the Monty Nefaro theme song, Riding High. What's your partner's name? Bartman! There you go. Thank you. You can find their music on the Wisteria Hall YouTube page here on Spotify. Download their music on Apple Music, Reverb Nation. If you didn't know it, this is Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, yeah. Monty Nefaro. Seen here on YouTube, where we were once seen by two million viewers, but now once. we are lucky enough to. No, nah. <laughs> it's rebuilding, it. guys. Really, thank you for it all the support. Is rolling the channel is so rolling far. pretty good, so we yeah. are recovering. And I will yeah. tell you, I posted <laughs> a video that got us suspended, <laughs> and again? they uh, nailed me on it again. But guess what, guys? I appealed it, and we won the we appeal. Actually, won. What so do you know? So look at that. What do you know? And again, I still meet with YouTube twice a month and, right. you know, yada, yada, yada. Why do I meet with them? They have a lot of interesting questions because thanks to the beautiful what's people the, what's out the there. What's the first thing they ask you, though? How does it feel to be public enemy number one? Because no, the, the question <laughs> is they like... don't understand why the retention time is so much higher than the average YouTube page. Oh, very and I say it's because of the wonderful guests like Lloyd. There you go. And the beautiful Monty and the family family, right. like yeah, R.J. The, the Hudson, with Phil Desiree, J.A. Will, ESO created, creative, uh, Maria, the first lady of wrestling, hey, Maria. Davis, yes. Roy Batiste, yes. who says, by the way, Rip Mills Lane. We yeah. discussed that on the first show. Yeah, we did. We you, did. You, you might have missed it, Roy. Yep, yep. we um, cover it. So we're going to take a quick break where we have the honor Oh, by the way, if you live in New York, you will catch this interview with Mr. Lloyd Annoy on Channel 115 on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. and on Saturdays at 11 a.m. Lloyd Annoy? Annoy, eh? I'll I got it. We got it. Channel 22. <laughs> look, tw I'll hack my own last name up. Channel 20, Tuesday. <laughs> don't think I wouldn't do it. Tuesday is at 9 p.m. We'll be right back, and this is going to be a hot one. We will see you in a Samoan second. Jimmy, I got to take a dump. What? No. I mean, I need a dumpster. <sighs> well... 
For all those needs, you need to call Big V Dumpster Rental, Long Island, New York, 631-900-DUMP. Elm Logistics, for all your logistic needs, call 631-299-3595. That's 631-299-3595. Elm Global Logistics, pride, performance, and partnerships. All right, welcome back to Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast, Monty and the Pharaoh, only seen here out of Indie Music TV, where we are honored to have the great Lloyd Annoy. Lloyd, I'm hacking up your name. Yeah. Straighten me out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is it? Is it? Uh, uh, you're not. Uh, one more time. You're not the first one. Uh, it's Anawai. 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 On a Y E, -E. Uh, uh, -E. yeah, nice. yeah. I love it. I don't, that must be annoying all the time. Here, they do it on. It, 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 that's them. what everybody says. You know, they'll say annoy, and then they say, "Yeah, we're annoying." <laughs> there you go. That's pretty funny. <laughs> Lloyd, Brittany Griner. Yes, sir. Thoughts, oh. my friend. Oh boy. Oh, man. They don't have to be our <laughs> thoughts. <laughs> so, <laughs> whatever you think. I, 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 to be honest, I, I think it's a disgrace, you know, because uh, I mean, if she if she did the what she claims she, or what they claim she did, you know, have drugs on her, she has to pay the time. I mean, I don't care if you're in the United States or you're in another country. If you know it's, you're doing something illegal, you you can't just think you're going to get away with it. And apparently, our president went over there and bailed her out. And uh, I I think it's I think it's a shame to be honest with you. Well. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> <laughs> you, you just uh, your opening monologue would have been ten seconds, but just as effective. <laughs> well, I, I mean, that's like anybody else, you know. What I mean, it, just because she's a, a famous basketball player, I mean, right. you can be a professional wrestler, you can be a baseball player, anything. If you're gonna do something wrong, I mean, especially in a, in, a, in a foreign country, I mean, every foreign country got different laws. Yep. You know, and if that's the law of, of Russia, you know, then she's got to deal with it. But apparently uh, they come to the rescue. But I, I, I guess they said that we have a veteran that's still stuck over there. Am I correct? Yep. That is correct. Yep. Yeah. But what are they doing for him? Someone that served our country. Crickets. And someone that doesn't give a shit about our country. There you go. There you that's where I see it. So let me ask you this. Samoan culture, right, which is strong. Uh, from what I understand, how do you guys feel about the United States, and is it, is it equally as strong for the love of the United States within your culture? Uh, yeah, of course, uh, because um, see, Samoa has got three little different islands, four different little islands, but you got the main islands, which is American Samoa and Western Samoa, and how American Samoa became part of the United States is because during the war, they used to use, uh, you know, the island for the ships. They used to hide them in the cove. And, you know, the U.S. Uh, uh, Navy used to, you know, hide the ships over there. So, you know, they they became, you know, they decided to become part of the United States. And uh, we, you know, we love America. I mean, uh, I was raised here and born here, but the rest of my family, you know, my dad and my uncles, they were born in the islands. And, uh, I love it there, but, uh, you know, America's America. Lloyd, I got to ask you, after uh, giving us your thoughts on Brittany Griner and uh, giving us a little history lesson on Samoa, being a great member of the Samoan professional wrestling dynasty, after these first couple of questions, are you feeling oozy yet? <laughs> I'm always I'm, I'm always oozy. I'm always oozy, juicy. There we go. Can you get us into the family? We want, we want to be oozy. Or is it the New York accent? Hey, we just hey, done? 
Well, hell, if, if Sami Zayn could be Usi, you could be Usi as well. Oh, I love it. I Very love funny. it. All right, let's 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 actually talk pro wrestling. Obviously, you're part of the great Samoan dynasty. What was it like being raised by, you know, we grew up with one of the greatest tag teams of all time, Offer and Sika. What was it like being around folks such as these? I mean, I love my dad and my uncle. You know, my they they were one of the best tag teams in the world, and and my dad will always be my idol. Uh, but when we were younger, it was rough. I mean, my dad didn't hold no punches on us. If we wanted to be in the business, we had to learn the hard way. And uh, I respect my dad for training me and training the rest of our family that way because we respect the business a lot more than a lot of guys out there. And I'm not saying anything bad about any of the boys in the business, but some of us work a lot harder than others. And uh, what I mean by that is, you know, respect in the business and, and, and know where you came from because it actually put food on the table for us when we were young and it puts food on the table for my kids. So, you know, in order to respect the business, we, we worked hard for it and worked hard to where we, you know, where we, where we belong in the business. You know, all of, you know, Vince McMahon has got a great, the McMahon's got a great uh, relationship with us. And uh, you can see a lot of our family are always going to be involved in WWE. Right now, there's four of them that are there right now. Um, and uh, they're doing great. Are you excited that Triple H is in charge after Vince McMahon stepping down? I like I like Vince. You know what I mean? Uh, he is rough. You know, one of the best businessmen I've ever seen. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of happy that Triple H is in there because he's bringing a lot of good talent back. And um, there's a lot that they got rid of, and uh, they're bringing them back. Like, for example, uh, Braun Strowman, great guy, awesome dude. Um, he was at his peak when they got rid of him, and uh, now they bring him back. So I'm hopefully that they can bring him back up to the top. Uh, and, uh, for example, I heard that they're bringing Steven Regal back, which is going to be awesome. Correct. Because Regal is, a man, he's top notch. I've, I've learned a lot from Regal. And I respect him and sat down and really had some deep, deep, deep talks with, with him when I was younger and even, you know, um, a few years back. And uh, Reed was an awesome dude. AEW a flesh in the pan to you? Do you see them being around 20 years from now? No. Nah. I, don't, I don't really watch them because uh, to me, their wrestling doesn't make any sense. It's it, <laughs> there's everybody flipping, flopping all over the place. You know what I mean? That's not wrestling. He, you know, there's no psychology. There's nothing whatsoever. Even though I'm not saying there's a lot of psychology in WWE, but it makes sense. Storylines are making sense. In AEW, I don't see any storylines. I don't see anything. Lloyd, you've traveled the world, um, but I have to ask you this question. I'm going to ask you respectfully. What was it like growing up in Allentown, Pennsylvania? I used to have to travel there twice a week to look to work with my factory up there. Mm-hmm. I hated it. <laughs> <laughs> is it is Allentown a hole? I wouldn't even know. Fill me in. Fill in that hole. <laughs> Allentown's not bad. I mean, uh, we actually lived in Whitehall, PA, which is the a town over. But um, when we first moved there, it was back in '85. Uh, you know, uh, wrestling was big there. They had the ag hall where uh, WWF used to wrestle. You know, my dad and them, they used to do TV tapings there. Uh, that's maybe about an hour away from Hamburg where, the, you know, uh, Hamburg Fieldhouse is. So uh, wrestling actually started in uh, Allentown and Hamburg and, and Philadelphia and all that. Uh, so my dad wanted to open up a gym there because uh, my ex, my, well, his ex-wife, my stepmom she was from bethlehem so we moved back there and uh thought it was a good place to open up a gym you know and my dad was he liked it there so uh you know we stayed there ever since and i just recently moved from there about two years ago living in tampa right now but uh allentown was i don't know it's all right i mean uh i i really can't say much about it right now because um it's going downhill like a lot of other places. But um, when I was there, I enjoyed it. I had good times. I got a lot of good friends there. Uh, you know, uh, a, lot of, a lot of great memories in Allentown. 
you are living in Florida now. Don't ever come back. That would be a huge mistake. <laughs> it's normal where you are. No, I can't take that cold weather no more, man. No, no, no. I was just up there recently. Uh, yeah. I did a show for my brother up in uh, in uh, in the Poconos, and I swear we came from Florida from our family reunion. We just did our our fourth family reunion, and it was in Pensacola, Florida. And I went from there and then went straight down to uh, North Carolina where I had uh, Russell Cade. So I shot from there and went straight down to PA. And, man, just the difference, man, uh, it was unbelievable. I couldn't wait to get back home. <laughs> how, how, many, how many family members you have at this family reunion? Not everybody was there, man. Uh, <laughs> I say we had about 160 there. Did wow. Sammy's did Sammy Zane and come? That wasn't or? even that wasn't even a quarter of it. Now nah, Sammy Zane didn't make it, man. He's uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. He's Lucy. I figured he would be. I told there. you, Lloyd. I told sorry, you what Lloyd. you were going to get from this guy. You can't take me anywhere. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He, he wasn't. He wasn't feeling that Lucy that day. You know. What I mean, oh. I think he felt he man. was being around too many of us. <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd, were you were you in the wrestler? <clears throat> yes. So how were you? chose to go to the wrestler like how did they pick you for that movie by the way one of the all-time great movies forget about yes. just being a wrestling movie yes how did you end up being in the wrestler well actually uh my dad they got in touch with my dad to um train mickey rourke for their movie oh wow uh but before mickey rourke a lot of people don't know it was supposed to be nicholas cage yes. correct mm -hmm. we started training nicholas cage and then um i guess the national treasure 2 came out and uh well they wanted him to do national treasure 2 and so he pulled out and that's when they got in touch with big uh you know mickey work and uh, said listen we're giving you a second chance because we all know that mickey work you know he wasn't doing too good back then right but uh you know i think he did a hell of a job i wow. mean we trained him it was it, it was great he's a hell of a guy real nice guy how do you I mean, think Nick Cage uh, would have been if he was in that role instead of Mickey Rock? Do you think the movie would have been as successful? No. No. I don't think he could have played the part as well as Mickey did. I mean, his body wasn't up to par like uh, Mickey Rourke, but, uh, I mean, Mickey did a hell of a job. Do you think the movie would have been as successful if Evan Ginsberg was not the associate producer? <laughs> it was surreal. Oh, that oh my God. It was surreal. I suddenly was playing myself. Right. <laughs> Dude. Oh, my God. Oh, boy. All right, so... Anyway, <laughs> I hope he didn't call you for 350 uh, too days. Too funny. All right, anyway. Um, <laughs> what? I can't help it. Oh, poor Lloyd. Next. Oy. Lloyd, you get the call to the WWE. What is that like? You finally get to the big time. Yeah. How's that feel? Yeah. Uh, it, it's great, man. It, it, I was young. Uh, actually, I started with WWF uh, back in 1992. And I was on the road with them. Uh, and I remember when uh, my dad and them went back and they were going as the head shrinkers. And that's when uh, Yoko went as Yokozuna. And I was on the road. And uh, at that time, they had so many characters that wanted to come up with me. And then at the end, I ended up going back to Puerto Rico and wrestling over there because I wanted to learn this character that Chief J. Strongbow and Sergeant Slaughter came up with for me. So uh, when I went over there, Carlos Colon had me be the savage, you know, wild Simone. So I was like, man, I'm supposed to be doing this character, and, and here I am, you know, being something that they don't want me to be on TV. But uh, I ended up going back in 95 and 96 and going back and doing the head shrinkers with my brother after he left and then re-signed back in 1997. And that was something that was uh, – it was great to sign with those guys again. Uh, it was actually a shock because I wasn't looking forward to going back because I was. We were just trying to make you know uh, go to ECW at that time, wow. and um, we had a meeting with Vince uh, and my dad and uh, Rikishi had a, a, a meeting with the uh, and 
And uh, so uh, it was me and uh, my, my cousin, Mac, I rest his soul. Uh, he was, uh, we were sitting in the office and uh, they're upstairs doing their meeting. And next thing you know, my dad comes down and got this face and he's pissed off. And I'm like, oh God, this didn't go good. <laughs> so they come out and my dad's like, fuck this place. Excuse my language. He's like, yeah, we put money in this building. He's looking up at the building and he's this and that. And next thing you know, and he turns around, and he looks at me and my cousin Matt and he goes, you guys got a job again. <laughs> so, wow. and so it was pretty cool. You know, he shocked us and, and surprised us. And Vince uh, signed us back in 97 as uh, no, the New Age Samoans. That's the name we were going to go as at that time. And uh, we were on the road for a while and uh, they were going to air us. They could put us on. They took us off, put us on. And then finally, uh, things happen to where, you know, they just change their mind about things like they always do. And I was a little frustrated with them, but, you know, that comes and goes, you know what I mean? That's the business, you know, it's, you know, you, you can't have everything, but, um, I, I, I did all right. Well, after that, I went to ECW and, uh, did two years over there with Paul, which Paul is another Vince McMahon, one of the best in, in the business. Well, I love ECW. Great ideas. ECW was my favorite company back in the day. Talk talk to us about the company that basically changed the wrestling landscape, uh, landscape and the Samoan Gangster Party. Man, we I, the thing about ECW is when you went there, Paul gave you he gave you leverage. He he let you come up with your own ideas. He came up with his ideas, but he would let you add into it. And over there, it was just open. We all had a good time. There was nobody where you had stooges around, you know, saying this on you. Everybody had a great time. I mean, where could you go in the locker room where you could bring a, a fifth of uh, a whiskey and a, and a, a whole <laughs> a whole damn uh, thing of uh, beer in there and drink and have a good time, you know? <laughs> yeah. We, uh, it, it was fun, you know? You got New Jack and, up uh, in the top doing an April. There. <laughs> I don't know about that, man. I, I stayed away from that. Man. A couple oh, beers, boy. yeah, I would have. <laughs> yeah. Could you tell that ECW was not for long, though? I mean, just the way it sounds, it's totally different than the business model of Vince. It is. And I was shocked that um, Vince actually bought ECW because he bought it when it was at its prime, too. I mean, we, it was hot on right. TV. Right. And I, I thought it was going to it was going to give Vince some, you know, some competition uh, besides WCW back then. And it was. I thought it was just going to end up with just WWE and ECW because WCW was already on its way out. But, um, I, I mean, Paul, I mean, they couldn't get nobody better than to, to bring that company up than Paulie. I mean, he, he bring it from a different level. Now let's go back, back, back to the 89 mm -hmm. or nineties where I actually used to work for Todd Gordon, where it was, Eastern Championship Wrestling, right. original ECW. When it was right. just me and Sandman and a few other guys. We were actually we're actually considered the real original ECW. If you you know if you want to go back, that with the Morocco and Snooker were even around in those early days, correct? Before that, oh, even before before that. So like wow. the Tommy Cairo yeah. days, right? With Tommy Cairo, yes. So nice. when Tommy Cairo was there, I mean, there was a lot of us. There was a uh, JT Smith. I mean, there's a lot of guys that were there before, and we, I mean, we had a good time. Todd Gordon was a good guy. He did good, great business, great businessman as well. Never had a problem with Todd. He kept me as a top heel uh, for years until uh, Eddie Gilbert came in, got rest his soul. Uh, and then, you know, Eddie started bringing people from Memphis, and uh, I was like, uh, it's time for me to leave because mm. I knew he was going to bring everybody from Memphis and get everybody out of there. So I just took off on my own and. Uh, that was that, and then did my own thing from there. What did you think when you saw Shane Douglas throw the belt in the trash can and pull out an ECW championship? <laughs> what was what was your thoughts? I don't know, Shane, man. Uh, <laughs> he's a he's a he's a character, man. I, I like Shane. He's came a long, he's come a long way. Um, big difference in attitude in him once he went to ECW. I mean, he was he was cool when he was in WWE. We were all there together when he was. Uh, forget the character. He was. Uh, he was like a, a 
Who Dean? Teacher or whatever. I forget Dean, the name of Dean Douglas. Yeah, Dean, <laughs> Douglas. Dean, Dean Douglas. Dean Douglas. Yeah. yeah. When he was there as Dean Douglas, you know, I mean, Shane has always been cool. Yeah. But when he went to ECW, man, it just he just turned the notch up and said, you know, screw it. This is me. I'm gonna come out of. It's like he came out of the closet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was great. You know, Lloyd, you went a little old school, like back into ECW. So I'm going to ask you a question. You don't have to answer it, but this is like not part of the script, but it brings it up. We had a guest on um, the Virgin Princess, Princess Angel Amoroso. She uh, actually had a show on our channel for a little bit. She made a lot of claims of a lot of things that, that wrestlers did to her. Did you know Angel at all? Because I think she was involved back in the Todd Gordon dates. I heard about it. I, I I wasn't, you know, too familiar with it. You know, uh, I just hear stories about it, but I, I I don't know her personally. Fair enough. That's fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, did you get to come across Vince? You obviously worked for Vince. Did you get to ever talk to Vince or get a feel for Vince McMahon, the person? Uh, you, you know, <laughs> it's funny you say that because uh, you have to – First of all, you can't get to Vince because he goes right to his office. Okay. You know, he's got his office in every building he's at. And, uh, you know, you got to – you might as well get in line because there's a line to go talk to him. But uh, the good thing about it is every time we see him, he come through the, you know, to the uh, hallways and all the time. He say, hey, kid. And he go over there. And he, when I was younger, he'd always rub my head like this, you know. And <laughs> But uh, I, I always respect him. I was kind of scared to always talk to him. But after a while, you know, when I got older, I was like, yeah, "Hey, I gotta, I gotta talk to this guy and see if I can get a job again." But uh, Vince is Vince is all right. I mean, once you sit down and really talk with him, he's 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 not a bad person. You know, it's it's no small feat making a career as a professional wrestler, right? Because there's definitely a big gap between the major superstar and then the mid level guy, and then even the low level guy. Yeah. How how do how do you make a career out of it? And at any point you're like, I'm done. I can't handle this anymore. Yeah, um, I was saying earlier, and I was telling somebody else this as well. Um, the wrestling business is rough. I mean, you you love to hate it. You hate to love it. You know, but it's something that. Once you're in it, you know, it's kind of hard to get out of. It's, you know, it's just like a drug. It's like I said, it's like a drug. It's like addicting. You know, once you try to stop it, it draws you right back in. Uh, and especially coming from a big family like ours, you know, all of us wrestling and, you know, for years since we were kids, it's all we know and all we do. So, uh, you know, it's kind of hard to get out of it. But um, I see myself right now slowing down, you know, I'm, uh, going through some health issues right now. Um, I, I don't really put my business out there, but um, right now I am uh, dealing with uh, renal kidney failure. And uh, I just, I've been dealing with that. And uh, uh, it's, it's been rough, but uh, it doesn't stop me from going out there and doing signings and, you know, doing a few matches here and there. But uh, right now uh, I am up for uh, to get a kidney uh, transplant. And uh, the good thing about it is my uh, my wife is, from day one, she actually, sorry, I get a little emotional, but um, okay. from day one, she 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 always claimed that she was going to be my donor. And um, I told her, you know, don't, don't think, you know, to, don't get too serious about it because, you know, God forbid if you're not, I don't want you to feel, you know, discouraged or hurt. She goes, well, I don't know what I'm going to do if I'm not. She goes, but I feel that I'm going to be your donor. So, uh, you know, I went through all the tests and I've been on dialysis since November of last year. And uh, actually February of this year, they started to be on dialysis. And, uh, you know, she's been here every day. She, I got a machine at home. She sets me up. She hooks me up. She learned how to, you know, hook me up to the machine. And every day she goes, don't worry, babe, you're not going to be doing this for long. You know, I'm going to be a donor. And don't you know, three weeks ago, she, you know, she took the test. But don't you know, three weeks ago, the doctors called and she is my match. Wow. wow. 
That's you know, say God congratulations. is good. God is good, man. God bless. And, you hit the, uh, the, doctor, you hit the lotto. <laughs> yes, I did because did. the doctor told us. He said for 25 years that the doctor says she's been doing it. She goes, she's never hurt uh, seen a, a husband and a wife a match. Wow. It's one out of a hundred thousand that a husband and a wife would be a match. Wow. So the good Lord blessed me and uh, I got an angel with me. You do. You do. You do. Unbelievable. Well, Lloyd, I'll share with you. Um, we don't know each other until recently and it's definitely my honor. But uh, I've had two open heart surgeries. I just recovered from my second open heart surgery. Yep. So I'm not trying wow. to compare notes. I'm just trying to say, you know, Keep God fighting. is great and Keep you'll fighting. get through this and we'll be praying for you and everybody out there will be playing for you. Thank you, man. And I'm glad that you got through this. And, uh, you know, you got an angel right above you as well for having your second surgery. Uh, that's nothing to joke with because I just got finished doing a heart cath to check to see if my heart was good to go through the surgery and you know praise God that you know everything's good with it but uh it's scary it's you know the whole situation is scary and I can just imagine what you went through yeah well we'll go is through it together a, right trials and tribulations of life and uh we'll we'll make it so that's right that's right amen to that Amen. So this is the wrong time to be complaining about having gas? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, I had to. Hey, I had to uh, break hey, the mood. Hey, you, you got, you got, hey it, it doesn't pay rent, so you might as well let it out. Yeah, you there you go. To, yeah, you, wow, he's right. Lloyd, would you think <laughs> winning the Qatar Championship, I'm saying the, the country, Qatar. Right? I'll Qatar. hack up the everything. The Qatar? Was the biggest part of your Qatar. career? <laughs> Qatar. How, how, how there does it you rank, go. Thank you. How does it, <laughs> how does it rank winning the Qatar? Where does it rank in your career? <laughs> oh man, it was great because I got to wrestle and uh, win it from some uh, great guys. Uh, it was uh, actually it was a, a four way. It was me and a gentleman from uh, Austria called Chris the Bambi Killer. He actually was on contract with WWE a few years ago. But uh, it was me, him, and against Alberto Del Rios and uh, RVD, wow. Rob Van Dam. And I was honored to, you know, be part of it and uh, ended up beating Rob Van Dam with a small drop, uh, which I ended up breaking three of his ribs. I felt so bad because uh, <laughs> at the end, I don't know if uh, you've seen the tape, but I just couldn't get up on my shoulders and I went to grab him and it kind of like he was just dead weight. So I lifted him up with all my weight, and I went straight back. When I went right back, you could just see him fold up. He's like, oh! And his shoulder's up, and the referee saw him put his shoulder down. It was one, two, three. And then uh, next day, I get a call, and he's like, hey, Oos, you broke three of my ribs. I'm like, oh, shit. I felt so bad. Uh, Rob's a good dude, man. I love that guy. That wasn't very oozy of you. No, it wasn't Usi and me, but hey, I had to do what I had to do. That's for Lloyd, sure. do you want to tell this guy to stop baby. reaching for the Usi card every, what? you know? I You're mean... the one who put it in here. <laughs> I'm getting heat for what he started. This is terrible. Hey, I got to ask hey, you. Hey, hey, it's all right because they they even got shirts made up now, so it's all yeah. Usi to me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, got, I got to ask you while I got you here. One of the areas I'm always fascinated with is obviously down in Carlos Colon country, uh, Puerto Rico, WWC. What was it like, you know, dealing with Carlos Colon? And was it easy for you to go to Puerto Rico considering what happened to Bruiser Brody, you know, a few years before you got over there? It was easy because my dad just made that phone call and uh, Carlos opened, you know, let me in with open arms. But when I got down there, it was a different story. Okay. I was like, my uncle was there. My uncle Sika was there. And I was kind of like happy he was there. But um, after about three weeks, we were there. He left. And he went. He came, went back. Came back to the states, and I was there by myself. It was just me and uh, you know the, a lot of other guys that were there. You know the guys from Puerto Rico, and then uh, a few guys from the states that I didn't know at that time. Uh, and then it was Barbarian's brother, uh, Sione. He he, uh, he was there with me. But still, it, it was it was it was rough in the beginning. 
uh, <laughs> when you go out there and, you know, you're used to wrestling over here, and, you know, somebody in the ring, you know, you walk into the ring and somebody spits on you, you know, you're going to spit back at them like, you know, son of a bitch, <laughs> you mm. know? So, uh, that kind of like happened to me in Puerto Rico. And I tell this story because it's, it's a shoot, it's straight. I was uh, wrestling one of their guys. He's actually a cop in Puerto Rico. His, call, his name was La Ley de Puerto Rico. And I ended up beating him. So I'm walking back to the locker room, and then all of a sudden, here goes this guy. He looks at me, and he says something in Spanish to me, and I don't understand a word he said. And next thing you know, he spits on me, and I got pissed off, and I got a luger, and I spit back at him. So, you know, hey, laughing, people laughing at him, this and that. I go to the locker room, take a shower and change, Towards the end of the night, I'm driving back to where I'm staying at with uh, security. So we're walking out the building, and next thing you know, I hear, here's this guy that I spit on holding a 9 millimeter to my head. And lucky for the security guy, he got between us and started talking to him. And as he did that, I just backed up, and I went back in the locker room, and I sat in the locker room, and I didn't know where to go. There was no other place to go. And uh, at that time, uh, um, Jose Estrada's son, Rico, uh, was wrestling down there. And he came out of the shower and he looks at me and he goes, Lord, he goes, what's wrong? He goes, man, he goes, you're pale. And I told him what happened. And that's his hometown. So he goes, oh, this is not going to happen in my hometown. So he got dressed. And before you know it, security came and got me and said, let's go, let's go. The guy left. And we had to shoot in the car and take off. And, uh, you know, that was just one thing that happened down there. I went through a whole lot. In Puerto Rico, I could write a book, a book and a half, that is, of all the stuff that went on, uh, you know, but it was good times and there was a lot of bad times. What were your thoughts when Brody, when Brody was murdered, if I can ask? <sighs> well, I mean, I can never, I, I can remember uh, me and my dad, we were sitting in the house and my uncle was actually there when it happened. And okay. uh, he called my dad and he was telling him about what happened. Uh, but uh, I only met Brody a couple of times and uh, the times that I met him, Frank, he was, he was a nice guy. You know, I was young. I really, you know, was just starting to get in the business at that time. And um, everybody that I talked to and uh, told me about him said that Frank was a hell of a guy. He was, uh, you know, one of the guys, one of the best in the business at that time, you know, he was over like hell, that's for sure. Yeah. But, um, you know, his wife, I sat down and talked with her a little bit, uh, Barbara, and uh, she's, she's very nice as well. And, uh, you know, she just told me some stories about him. And it was it was good to hear things from her personally, you know. But um, all the boys, you know, that talk about it in Puerto Rico, you know, they uh, they don't say too much about it down there. Because, uh, you know, of course, uh, Jose uh, Gonzalez, uh, invader, he still was wrestling down at that time. And... Uh, you know, I, I seen him a couple of times in the office when I had to do interviews and I was kind of like, oh man, scared. You know, I ain't gonna lie to you. I was like, man, if I turn my back, this guy gonna stab me or what? Right. You know, right. but um, uh, there was one night where um, Mr. Hughes didn't show up. So he was main event and they put me in the main event. They said, okay, he didn't show up. We're gonna have you work with uh, Vader. And here I am shaking Oof. and my uncle looks at me. He goes, don't worry, I'm here. Like nothing gonna happen. So I went out there, and first thing he goes over there, he, I'm wrestling with him, and he gets me, and he grabs me in the hold. So I reverse it, and I grab him in the hold. The next day, he looks up at me, and he goes, "Don't hurt me. I know your father and your uncle." And I looked at him, and I said, "So," and I started beating the shit out of him. <laughs> 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 so uh yeah <laughs> so i was like you know what hey if i gotta give my my chance in i better get my licks in now there you go. of course uh he he got me back and put a damn knot in the back of my head i still got with a chair still but got um it. you know it, it was scary i was scary to uh you know work with him the first time but after a while he didn't want to work with nobody else but me oh, wow. there you go there you go lloyd how proud you must be. How proud are you of the bloodline? Did you ever think that Roman Reigns is going to end up being considered one of the all-time greats? This title reign is one of the longest going back to Hogan in the late 80s. Did you, did you ever think this would happen? And the Usos are now one of the clearly one of the all-time great tag teams. You must be very proud. Your thoughts on 
their recent push. Uh, I'm, I'm actually very proud of my family and my cousins and my nephews. Uh, but to be honest with you, in the beginning, I never expected Roman to be in the wrestling business. You know, he was uh, what the one uh, player for uh, for uh, you know play football, and then he got you know uh, uh, you know uh, after uh, college he got um, leukemia, right? What is it? Uh, they, they, he went to the Chargers, I think it was. Okay. Yes, mm-hmm. yeah, okay. I think uh, they yeah. Uh, the NFL, you know, drafted him into the Chargers, and uh, and that's when they found out, you know, uh, about his condition, you know, with the leukemia and all that. Right. But um, I didn't expect him still at that time to go into the wrestling business because he really, Joe wasn't, he wasn't really around the wrestling that much when he was young. But uh, he made that phone call to my uncle and said, hey, he wanted to be part of business. And when he did, uh, I knew from there that he was going to be a superstar. Really? Because he's got the look. He yeah, I mean, he's got the look. Yeah. He's got the talent. I mean, uh, uh, if you ever really got to sit down and talk with him, he's, his knowledge is very, very good. And, uh, you know, uh, when I seen him in uh, when he was down there in uh, FM, I think it was, yeah, FM, FMW. No, yeah, he started FMW then. Mm-hmm. It was NXT, all that, when he first right. started NXT. But uh, when he was there, Vince actually told him, he goes, I'm going to make you the next rock. Really? He sure did. He wow. sure did. He sure was, did, yeah. Was Roman bothered by over the years, you know, does Roman even pay much attention to the internet? Because when he was being pushed as a face, there was people just tearing into him. We always loved him. We loved him even when he was being, you know, pushed as a face, because I thought he had it. But was he bothered by any of the, you know, the trolling and the remarks on the internet? Does that stuff bother if i could call him this joe yeah and i mean I, i'm sure it did i mean uh you know we, we used to sit down and talk matter of fact we actually were both of us were together we did the uh, things for uh for actually our cousin uh Dwayne. we did the hobbs and shaw we did the, the trailer for that and uh, we really sat down and talked and that's the same time that you're talking about where he was a baby face but you know people were taking him as you know this booing him and everything uh, and and, and it, it probably did bother him, but he knew that he had business to do, you know, and uh, he just kept a, kept it straight. And uh, I guess that time off where, you know, we had COVID and everything, I think he just got things together and said, hey, you know, this is what I want to do. And he knew that he wasn't getting over as a baby face. And that's what he just wanted to go as a heel. And I think that was the best move he ever did. Did you get a chuckle when you saw him with Paul Heyman, your former boss, Paul Heyman, managing him? <laughs> yeah, I'm happy. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that because Paul's been around our family for years. I mean, he started in the business when he was actually, you know, doing interviews and, and being a photographer and all that years ago. Hmm. So he's, he's, you know, he's been around our family for years and uh, Paul's always been good to us. So I was happy that he was part of that because I know he's got a lot to do with a lot of that's going on because his brain is, I can see him in, in a lot of uh, what's going on. So I'm, I was happy that he was part of it. So Paul's putting in some cre- serious creative right now with the bloodline. I, I think so. I mean, uh, it probably don't look like it, but I, right. I, I would say he's got something to do with it because he's not just going to sit back and, and, and not do anything. Paul's not like that. He's, he, he'll, even when I, I was, Actually, right before COVID, I was supposed to go back to actually the WWE. He, I had a meeting with them, and I wanted to go back as a producer. Mm-hmm. And uh, when he was in charge, first thing he did, he goes, get down here. He goes, we have a meeting. And he pushed to bring me back in, and then all of a sudden, COVID hit. Mm-hmm. So, uh, you know, that was that. But uh, Paul has always been on top of things, and I don't know why they really took him out of the position. I'm kind of glad he did because he's in a great position right now. But uh, when he was in charge, I mean, I, I would love to see him in charge, you know, somehow. Lloyd, wrestling's very competitive. Is there personal jealousy between all you family members, right? You're all very successful. Do you guys have a personal competition with each other, and does it get a little uh, spicy between you guys? No, I mean, everybody's got their standards to where they're at. Like, you know, the names, how high they're like. Of course, Roman's on top right now. He's the hottest thing going on. Uh, you got um, 
you know, because of Rikishi, you got, of course, Dwayne, all those guys. But, you know, we all are loving family. We love each other. And, um, you know, we just, you know, I, I'm happy for everyone, you know, just like I'm sure they'll be happy for me if I was in their position as well. You know, we all get along. When we see each other, it's like we never skip the beat, you know, like we've seen each other every day. So, uh, you know, that part, I don't see any of us being, you know, jealous or anything like that. I mean, we're all happy for each other. All right, Lloyd, we're almost out of time. I'm going to hit you with this final question. Who's the head of the table, The Rock or Roman Reigns? Oh, boy. Oh. Oh, boy. Man. Be careful. Well, you know, <laughs> no, I'm going to tell you who the real head of the table is. Do it. <laughs> it, it ain't Dewey, and it ain't the it ain't Roman. It's my dad. Yeah, nice. Yeah, he's yeah. the one that started us all in this wrestling business, and he is the one that is the head of the table. If you want to get serious about it, there you go. But he's right carving now, the turkey. TV, he's carving the turkey. Yes, he's the one that started all of us out of it. But if you want to say who on TV right now, I got to give it to Roman. I mean. Ooh. You know, The Rock is not on the scene right now, but if he comes back on, I'm sure they'll try to make him as the head of the table. But uh, uh, Roman is doing his thing. He's uh, he's he's putting the asses in seats right now. Every you know, every episode. WrestleMania, we're tortured over the last few years with the potential of The Rock versus Roman. Do you think we're going to get it soon or get it at all? I'm hoping next year because they got it in Hollywood, so they right. must have something planned right now because uh, I think it's due to his scheduling and all that because they wanted to do it like three years ago, I believe, okay, or two years ago, and um, to his schedule, and he's got so many movies going on, and, uh, uh. you know, I, I guess they had to wait for the right time where he can take a little break, and I think uh, maybe that might be the right time. Well, if they have you do a run-in, who are you going to help? Yeah, whose side you on? <laughs> yeah, I, that's that's hard because we're all family. But you know what? If I have to get ahead of the game, I'm going with Roman. Nice, awesome, nice. Smart. smart. Lloyd, all seriousness, our prayers are with you. Yes, things will be well. We'll be thinking about you. Thank you for taking this time on Long Island's number one pro wrestling broadcast. What an honor! You were such a great guest. Thank you so much. I appreciate you guys, man. And uh, my wife was just telling me she surprised me. She put a GoFund up on my 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 Facebook, and that's um, something I didn't know, but uh, it's something that'll help out, you know. And I heard earlier uh, you guys were you know talking about Barry Windham, and um, Barry's a good guy, and I, I pray for him and make sure that everything is good with him, and I pray that the good Lord, it, you know, heals him and. He gets out of this, uh, you know, whatever he's going through right now with his heart attack and everything. But, uh, you know, uh, I say go out there and support, you know, your favorite wrestler. If uh, Barry Windham's one that you uh, cherish and love, uh, go out and support his GoFundMe because it's for a good cause. It well, really we'll is. be sharing your GoFundMe page also. Um, you're one of our favorite wrestlers. So, you know what? Thank you to your wife also. Thank you. I appreciate it. God bless Thank you, you guys sir. very much. Yeah. God bless you. Too. you. God bless you. Thank and, you uh, uh, whenever you guys want me to do it, I'm ready to do this again. We'll be ready to have you on, man. It's an honor. Thank you very much. You guys take care, man. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks, Lloyd. Thank you. Now, the great one, man. Yeah, he's awesome. How awesome is that he's guy? He's awesome. He's awesome. I want him to do a run-in. Let's have it. Let's have that program. Well, first thing I want to do is I got to get to his Facebook page. I want to get his GoFundMe page. Absolutely. I want to start po posting on all our social media. Absolutely. Again, guys, you know what? We only have one turn on this planet. Yep. And the reality is if we only make a difference in other people's lives. So here's here's a man who's entertained millions Yep. Um, yep. as a wrestler. Yep. Um was part of one of the greatest wrestling families ever. Absolutely. Um, so let's take the time out and donate and help people out. I mean, it's, it's all we can do. That's all we can do. 
Jason Morning says, good interview. Thanks, m &P. No, thank you for joining thank us. You. Thank Phil you. said, great question, guys. Thanks, Jay Phil. Will says, thank good uh, good interview. Life has some interesting circumstances. Have a good night. Uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us. Um, I also want to, you know, I want to thank Lloyd for joining us. And uh, yeah. wow. Yeah. Wow, what an honor. That's going to be a lot of fun to listen back to because I'm sure that there's more nuggets than we can even grasp when we're doing it. You know what I mean? You, you watch it back and I'm looking forward to it. Think about this. I understand this is his wife. I yeah. get it. But Boy, think about, blessed? but he think about the sacri sacrifice. Sure. That without a flinch, by the way. Without that a flinch, that sacrifice. Yeah. She is an angel. He he's got her accurately, you know, descripted. That's just that's just amazing to me. It is, he is blessed. It, it is amazing. He's blessed. The power of love, love, and and just human beings in general. Yeah. We could be the worst of ourselves, and we could be the best of why ourselves. Why doesn't the human race tap into that more? Instead of always seeming to just reflexively tap it, I don't even know if that's a word, you know, just tapping into the negative right away. I think we should all like maybe for a day unplug our machines and talk to each other, folks. Why don't we try that one out? See or maybe you should try not putting on John Sawyer's big head on videos. See, you're doing you it do again. No, He's going to say it. something about my band. You stop it. You stop. Chief Farrell, what happened? Oh, I don't know, Mike. Yeah. What did you do? Best, best part of the interview? <laughs> wait a minute. Best part of the interview? Yeah. When I asked the Evan Ginsburg question, oh. Lloyd clearly knew who I was uh, talking about, could, and yeah. he went like and, this. And perhaps he's trying to forget about who you're talking about. <laughs> Without a doubt. That might be uh, a... Uh, I'm might be the something. associate producer of The Wrestler. Do you understand me, Lloyd? You, you will do what I say. You realize how much of my hard work sits in my closet over that in film? <laughs> What? Oh, all right, guys. With that, we'll see you next Thursday. I want to thank Jared for, for producing yet another great show. And I want to thank my fleet of lawyers. Don't touch me. And we'll see you next Thursday. I do have a fleet of them. We got a good lineup coming up. We're doing, we're doing a major push. And thank you again, guys, for supporting the Monty and the Faro show. This is Mike Monty. This is the Faro. And until next week. Wait a minute. You so what? 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 I want to thank Lloyd again for joining us. What an incredible interview. It was fantastic. Go ahead. All right. That was, that was very easy of you. Oh. Until now. I had to. You put it in the script. I don't want to hear that word again now. Never again. You've worn it out. I said it three times in 60 minutes. That's a long time. That's, that's not abusing it. One Usi works. One it's Uzi funny. Works. Two Usis. You hear eh. those idiotic Jared, ones? how many Usis can you say in 60 minutes? Three is reasonable. I'll give him three more. He's gonna you want him. six I like Usis? It. I like it. He likes it. Ugh. Don't, don't you hear the fans? All they want to do is hear them say the word Usi. You got, you got to check out those Usi fans. from Sami Zayn. Oh, wait it's a minute. I'm way cooler than Sammy Zane. Wow. Are you kidding me? All right, anyway, this is Mike I mean, Monty. Maria Davis knows I'm cooler than Sammy Zane. Maria's right, already Maria? gone for the night. She, she went is? to sleep. Oh, geez. Maria, watch this on a replay and agree. Right in. Anyway, you've been watching Monty and the Farrell. And until next time, on behalf of my partner, thank you for letting us come into your living rooms. Later.